Hey Ben, I just want to uh, make this video for you about uh, Noom for Linux. Uh, it's a really good tool to not only use against Windows machines, but also uh, Linux machines in terms of finding out any kind of network information like shares and uh, possible workgroup names and um, groups that users belong to and also user names as well as a myriad of other things. It's a really powerful tool. Uh, you could always type in, I think it's TAC H uh, after a Noom for Linux to uh, get the whole complete help file uh, or you can just type the command in for Linux and it should bring that up for you. Uh, so going forward on this specific machine, Keatropics, I guess it's called, uh, if you run a quick nmap scan here, there's there's a, quite a few vulnerabilities in this one. Uh, if you run an nmap scan on it, you'll see the same results pretty much that I have here. Um, and you can see that uh, it says open SSH. Uh, there might be an exploit for that, and sometimes when you're doing uh, searching for exploits, you may have to start deducting numbers. Like, for instance, if I did it for OpenSSH 2.9 P2, uh, and it didn't come back with anything, I would maybe take away the 2, and then the P, uh, as well as the 2, and then step backwards and try to find something that would match your versioning. Uh, there is also an exploit for Apache here uh, on this machine, and it has to do with mod SSL. And so if you checked out mod SSL, uh, you'd see that there's a couple of exploits for that. Uh, and then we also have one for the Samba service here. But you notice that this doesn't actually give you a version name. And that's kind of where a Noom for Linux comes in. So let's take a, a look at some results here uh, that I have on a scan I just completed. Uh, so you'll see target information. It basically just gives you the IP address of the machine that you typed in. Um, it'll give you a rundown of known usernames. Uh, so this one has administrator guest and all this good stuff root obviously that's pretty important right that's the goal of this machine uh, so looking forward down the list here uh, anytime you have a windows based network which you probably know you have a domain controller and then you have clients which are the workstations uh, so if there was a domain name or even just a simple work group name it would be listed here and uh, this one of course is called my group so that's the work group that this machine in particular belongs to and here we start looking at the status of some of the shares uh, that might be in this machine. Um, so you can see that uh, percent tw or uh, greater than less than 20 here uh, says it's a file server service. And so uh, what that would mean is it probably is sharing some files there somewhere. And going down the list here, um, it does basic session checks and things like that. Uh, getting the SID for the IP address here can't determine um, where it starts getting a little bit interesting here is it says uh, it tries to get the OS information and so get OS info for the IP address from SMB client uh, SMB clients a tool that's built into most Linux systems you probably know uh, to be able to map shares and things like that uh, so it says OS Unix okay that's good uh, we kinda can guess from our um, scan here uh, that it says Red Hat Linux, right? And so we can do a more of a, a complete uh, OS discovery on that as well if we had to. Um, so where it gets important here, it says server. And this one says Samba 2.2.1a. Now, like I said, there is an exploit for that. So I would take this because it didn't give that again in our uh, results down here. It didn't tell us what Samba version is in there, right? Uh, so in this case, we would say, okay, Samba 2.2. 2.1a and then I would search for exploits for that as well. Just to give you another little brief overview here, uh, it is also possible to gain usernames and group names of that machine uh, and that could be important when you wanted to maybe create a list to try to brute force some services or you know use those uh, usernames to try to break into the system some other way. Uh, so I'll scroll down here and just give you kind of a brief overview of this tool. Uh, again it's a pretty good tool so um, definitely should be using this on even if it's Windows based machines. So it couldn't find some users here, some errors came up. Uh, there are share enumerations. Now, whenever you look up here, you should see it's a share name, right? That's in a column, IPC share, and it's IPC service, Samba server, uh, and then an admin share. So I would try and, um, you know, mount those with SMB client or something. Uh, to try to be able to see if it's an open share, if I can gain access to it, right? Uh, because if there's 
you know, shares on there that you can mount without a username, password, and authentication, which sometimes does happen uh, from misconfigurations, then bingo, you can now map that share and go and look through their files. Oftentimes you will see important stuff in there too. Um, so uh, usually when it's trying to, it tries to automatically map the shares, right? Like in a temporary space. And then it tries to do that and give you some information. Now, uh, when it says, if you could see here, this, uh, let's see here, this, this line right here that I'm highlighting, um, usually, so it tried to map the admin share, right? That we saw just above and it said can't understand response and that usually is the case when you need a username and password authentication to that share to be able to access it even read it write to it whatever um, so when it says can't understand that response that's usually what it means uh, if it were an open share without any kind of and you'll see this in other vms that you'll get um, in a couple weeks when you have a share that can be mounted without any authentication it should say okay here or something similar to that uh, so that's important there. Um, you can also check for password policies, right? So if you were to, let's say on a Windows-based machine, if you were to try to brute force, um, let's say the admin account, uh, usually, you know, good domain administrators would set a lockout policy of, say, three failed attempts and then lock that account, and then the administrator has to actually undo that account uh, or unlock it. Then again, mentioning groups, uh, you'll see that it starts getting some built-in groups there that are on that system. And you can see there's a group, administrators, users, guests, power users, and so on. Uh, so that might be helpful to, you know, for, for your recon later on. And you can see some memberships here for those groups, uh, RIDs and stuff like that. And let's see here. Again, it's just giving you another... Um, copy of the groups local groups and let's see here now here's where it comes in on users um, on that machine itself so uh, if you were up against a domain and controller of course it would have all the users listed there um, but you can see that uh, if you start going through here um, you know you got some usernames that you can copy uh, it kind of gets like right down here from this line down uh, if you were to use some fancy hijinks with cut and all that stuff uh, inside Linux, you could uh, take these usernames and put them into a separate flat file, like a text file, and you could use those as usernames and passwords and whatnot, uh, brute forcing later on. So you could see that roots there, bin, uh, ADM, sys, uh, TTY, operator, games, all the stuff that you commonly find in just a basic uh, Unix system or a Linux system. Uh, and then you see you can get printer info if there's any printers attached and shared, and that's not the case here. So Anum for Linux is, is pretty popular uh, with pen testers because, like I said, it, it gives you a ton of information, um, and that should really help you further uh, your, your recon in, in order to gain access to the system. Um, now, I will tell you there is a caveat to this. Sometimes when you're working on systems, it will not give you the um, Samba version. Uh, so there's actually a... Uh, auxiliary module inside of MSF console uh, that's SMB underscore version if I remember right and that actually will give you an accurate depiction of what the uh, version of Samba is running on that uh, server um, but again so in here it just tells you straight off the bat uh, it's running Samba 2.2.1a and again there is an exploit for that so um, try to search that out and use that avenue uh, there is like I said earlier a um, in this machine here, I think there was one for OpenSSH as well, uh, and I definitely know that there's one for Apache, but it's the mod SSL that goes with Apache, uh, OpenSSL 0.9.6b. So check those out as well. And in your report, I'd like to see that, um, you know, as a pen tester, we're supposed to be checking every service, every port to see if it's vulnerable or if it's not, and if it is, Let's get it into report, run a vulnerability assessment against the, the target machine. Uh, so now, right now, if you were to take a vulnerability assessment against this machine, uh, you would find that there are vulnerabilities for those services that I just mentioned, right? So go ahead and try to do that as well. Um, we taught you how to do that in the course. And then uh, let me know how you make out. If, again, if you have any questions, please free, feel free to email me. I appreciate it.
Okay, Ben, I hope this helped you out, and uh, I am packaging this up and sending it to you today. Talk to you soon.